Uh, Josh Green for Tanks on Tails. Delighted to be joined by one of the qualifiers, Riley's qualifiers for the UK Open, Mr. Jack Mayo. How are you doing, Jack? It's great, Josh. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for taking time. Uh, pleasure. My pleasure is all mine. Um, big moment for you getting to the UK Open. I'm sure something that you've been working towards for a long time being in a PDC major. How does it feel just to sort of achieve that part of your, your career? It's a, it's you know, it's massive. It's it's just like such a big stepping stone. I've tried to I've tried to go to the UK and qualifiers before. Last year it was like I got the final lost in the final in I think it was Chester. Mm -hmm. And thought we'll give it another go this year. I've been playing really well, like locally for a while now. So I thought I've got an outside chance. But to go down there and do it on the day was it was just surreal at the time. And I'm just like so excited to get down there. Talk about those UK Open qualifiers and what the atmosphere is like, because I know they're some of them are smaller venues and they're round with players. It is a it's it's quite a it's quite an old school atmosphere, you know. It's just you know you know it is in a pub or a club. It's it's quite um I'm trying to think of the word. It's quite condensed and mm. there's a lot going on. So and they're long long days as well. What's the what's the pressure like in those sort of events? And does it compare in any way to what you've had on things like the Dev Tour and the Challenge Tour? It's weird. I find it I find these sort of events totally different to like PDC ones. I think I'm really finding it on like the Dev Tour environment. But the Riley's feel totally different. It's it's weird. I don't know how to describe it, but it's a totally different feeling. As you were making progress in that tournament and sort of getting through the rounds and the dream of getting to the UK Open was getting closer. How did that that feel for you? Like I say, obviously last year I lost in the final, so I think that run that day helped me because it was constantly in my mind all the way through the day. The further I got down, I think it was the last 16 game I beat Scott Waits. I think it was 4-1. And it, once I got through that, I was like, we're in with a shout here. And it just... I seem to just get better as the day went on. And in the end, I didn't even really feel like any pressure going into the final or nothing like that. I thought, you've been here before, just put right the wrongs of last year. Yeah. And we saw you We saw you on the Dev Tour at the weekend as well. You've been competing in those tournaments for a number of years oh. now. How has it changed for you and how has the, the, the general sort of standard changed on that tour? The standards just well, we know how youth starts is now. The standards just rising every single year. So uh, playing on a tour like that, it's great for someone like me because you constantly have to you've got to rise with it. And it's it's molded me in you know, like from where I was when I started, it was probably six years ago now, to where I am now, it's done wonders for me. Like it's molded me into like the player that I am now. Do you think it's a case of like the players that now step off the Dev Tour are completely ready for that that top Pro Tour game. You look at the likes of Jean Van Veen, Vessel Nyman, who have done it in recent years. They come straight off that tour and they're ready to hit it on the Pro Tour. Yeah, hundred percent. There's, you know, there's probably a good. There's like a dozen players who have like that level already, but then there's you look past like the tour card players, and there's yet more. There's loads more who are just as good and capable of making that step up in like the near future. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about your sort of darting beginnings as well. Because as you say that it started a number of, of years ago. When did the the first sort of interest of darts come into your mind? I mean just just generally I think the first time I threw a dart was probably about nine or ten years old. It was it's going away back. But competitively the interest never really rose till I was like 15. Because mm -hmm. I started just I started practicing a lot more in the house. And then I actually remember, I think it was my granddad said to me about looking for like local tournaments and stuff. And then I think it was 2017, I went into the, my first one. It was like a massive open in Newcastle. I think I lost like round two that day. But from then on, you just you get the bug, like the local scene in the northeast. You get the bug and there's there's so much darts going on. You're just constantly playing and you know, it just it's all just took off from there. 
Was that sort of when you started to think about it as something where you could make a few quid from and get through the rounds and possibly you never know down the line it could be something where you can make a career out of it has that ever entered your mind i mean that's that's the dream isn't it you know that's everyone's dream they'd love to you know be able to make a living out of dots um i think it, the first time it really struck me was like it was a few months after i started playing competitively that i actually went onto the dev tour for the first time and then that year like I didn't have a lot of expectation going into it, but I ended up getting into the world youth in like the first year. And then I suddenly thought like, that was when it really hit me. Yeah. Did you feel like you were a, quite a reasonable player even when just starting out? Yeah, I've never, I've always thought that to be honest, but it's, I've been like reasonable for quite a while. It's taken a lot of time and a lot of playing to get, keep progressing and get to like well toward the level that I'm at now where I'm going to be playing in like a major tournament you know I was going to say the, the level over the last sort of 18 months seems to have upped a fair bit it used to be maybe just a, a competitive dev tour player whereas now you say you're you're getting to the latter end of those tournaments you're qualifying for the UK Open can you sort of put your finger on what's got you those extra couple of gears do you know what it is? It, I'm so only like I don't really have like anything natural to be honest. Like I've just got to constantly just be putting the practice in. And I, one of the things I work so hard on is like on my my actual technique and my throw. Because if, if you can you can ask people locally that know me, and I used to be quite jerky with my throw and stuff. When I think working on that, especially that's just helped me get maybe those extra five ten points on my averages and things like that. You've talked about the local scene a little bit there. I mean, it's really thriving up in the northeast. There's a number of tour card holders and younger players as well. I mean, Adam Hunt, like sort of Callum Ridd, who's who's really come through that school as well. Is it a big boost for you that you've got those players around? If you do go to a, a local open, you might bump into a couple of them. Yeah, it, it's definitely for me. It's it's brilliant that they they still come to these things and you still get the chance to compete against them. It, it's brilliant. If you're gonna, if you want to improve, you've got to play against those sort of standard of players. And I think another thing for me is like the youth in the area as well. Having them constantly improving, there's like there's a boom in the northeast with like the youth scene and stuff. And there's more of them coming onto the dev tour now. So you constantly, I'm not gonna say it's not rivalry, but there's like that sort of you know we like all push each other to keep getting better. Yeah, and it's not just that that north. Northeast scene. I know you're obviously in the same management as Callan and, and Luke Woodhouse and Michael Smith, and along with Mark, I'm sure you've got a lot of support there that that helps you through these sort of new things that you've got in your career. Yeah, honestly, you know, I can't even speak enough of what Mark's done for me. Like I've known him, it was probably nearly five years. I've I've signed with Dark Promotions, and honestly. The pro from like day one to where I'm now under him is just it's it's a, so crazy. I just honestly I can't thank him enough for everything he does. He's he's just a top bloke as well, you know. He's just he's just brilliant. I don't know what else to say. He's just absolutely fantastic. And I guess to to have that back in from when you were a player that wasn't earning a huge amount of money, and he he showed a bit of faith in you, and now you're in a position where you're rising up those ranks, it must just give you a lot of confidence that somebody like that's put in some faith in you. It's 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 one thing he's always said to like me and the other like youngsters that he's got signed. It's like he's always thought of us as like long term. He's not worried about, you know, if we we don't earn much money and like on the dev tours and stuff. He's not worried. He's more about the long term and it's just it's really reassuring. I mean it's never entered my head too much about the need to win money anyway, but it's mm. always so reassuring for him to be like that. Yeah. Well, big weekend coming up for you. I, I wish you the best of luck in Minehead and hope the travel goes down all well. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can have a chat afterwards after getting a couple of wins down in Minehead. It's the plan, isn't it?